In this video, we're going to solve a problem which appear in J Advance 2014. Here, it's given that for every pair of continuous function f and z satisfying the relation that maximum of fx and maximum of gx are always equal when x lies inside the interval 0 to 1 and we have to test which option is correct so basically this is a problem where we have to analyze our problem based on the options provided so let's go ahead so first we consider the function right so here we consider two function fx and gx right now what is the meaning of continuous that means inside the interval it is a smooth function doesn't have a jump doesn't go to infinite and all that stuff so these things are are given us already now here we assume that fx has a maximum at x is equal to some particular value c1 where c1 lies between 0 1 because we only concerned about the interval or the close interval 0 1 what happened with uh, outside that well, i don't care because this is not our concern okay let's go ahead so we consider another function gx which have a maximum at x equal to c2 right because it is obvious that both the function right have their maximum value equal but that doesn't imply they will happen at the same x so therefore we consider that two different uh, c1 and c2 so let's go ahead and sketch the function arbitrary so here we consider the interval 0 and 1 at the point c1 and c2 and we consider the function fx so obviously we notice that fx has a uh, FF, fx has a maximum value at x equal to c1 because we know that that if the function will have this shape then that this particular point is called as local maximum right this are local maximum so function is increasing then function is decreasing in the other side right that's it now we consider the another function that is gx now these functions are arbitrary why it is uh, arbitrary because i am not sure about what is fx and gx so therefore we just arbitrarily draw two functions right and here we also note that it is given as their maximum values are equal so therefore we say that fc1 and gc2 are actually equal right so these are the given condition so that's it let's go ahead so now we consider right based on this information that if c1 and if gc2 are k so basically we are assuming the maximum value of the function in this interval as a local max and local max for both this function are k okay that's it let's go proceed further so now we consider or we redefine a particular function in the form if hx is equal to fx minus gx we just consider that so this is the trick we use to solve this particular problem let's go ahead so here what about the hx function right so let's try to observe the function right that gx has its maximum value at x is equal to c c2 right so therefore g of c1 will be definitely less than the maximum value right so therefore we can say g c1 is less than k and what about f c1 f c1 is already defined as k so therefore h of c1 right will be equal to right gc1 fc1 minus gco gc1 so therefore this is greater than zero so what actually we concluded here right let's do it separately so here we suggest that right that let's try to calculate that h uh, c1 value so h c1 is equal to f of c1 minus g of c1 that's obvious right now if c1 is already known as k okay k minus gc2 now see that the sorry gc1 now obviously gc1 must be less than k why because we have maximum value of g uh, occur only at c2 so therefore any other value it should be less than of the maximum value so that's why k minus gc2 one is greater than zero and hence we obtain that relation let's go ahead so now here fx as maximum value at x equal to c2 right that's obvious let's go ahead and analyze it so h of c2 will be equal to f of c2 minus g of c2 and that's it 
Now, what is G of C2? That will be replaced by K. Okay, that's it. Now, observe that F of C2, right, must be less than K. Why? Because see that f of c1 is equal to k. So the function fx attains its maximum value at c1, not at c2. So therefore, all other values in the interval 0 to 1, the function value of fx by the definition of local max, it is less than of k. So therefore, we conclude that h of c2 is greater than 0. So therefore, we can observe that inside the interval c1 to c2, right, h c1, is greater than 0 and AC2 is less than 0. So therefore, if, if we plot the equation of HX, right, plot the equation HX of the plot the function F HX, then the function HX must have a roots at C, belongs to C1, C2. So therefore, what it means, it means that the function FX and GX will intersect each other at the point C in between. So that's the meaning of it right so therefore we'll get some value c right such that hc is equal to zero so therefore we'll get some values c between the interval right so that's why we can say fc minus gc equal to zero and therefore fc and gc are equal so therefore, this is the conclusion we drawn. Now here, C1 and C2 are arbitrary, right? So we can attain this max mean, right? At any point, right? Uh, between 0 to 1. So that's why we can say that there exists a point C between 0 to 1, such that if C is equal to GC. So that's the concept. Let's go ahead. So when we achieve that, actually our job of this particular problem is done. So let's uh, uh, test for the options one by one. So first take that uh, option A. What is option A? It says FC squared plus 3FC is equal to GC squared plus GC. Now obviously if FC and GC are equal, right, the left hand side and right hand side will be equal obviously, right. So therefore it is a true statement, okay. For the next case, right, uh, it's FC squared plus FC equal to GC squared plus 3GC. Now here notice that, right, that if FC and GC are equal, like left and right cannot be equal, right. So so therefore, right, because why? Because see that FC squared and GC squared will be cancelled from both sides because they are equal and um, uh, FC and GC will be cancelled. So it says 1 equal to 3, which is an impossible condition. So therefore, it is a false statement. Go ahead for the third one. Again, you can see that that FC squared and GC squared will cancel and obviously that FC and GC will cancel. So 3 equal to 1. Again, it is a false statement. Now go for the D or the last one. It is obvious, right? If FC and GC if are equal, their square must be equal, right? And that's it. So therefore, for this particular problem, we can conclude that option A and option D are the correct option. And that's it. So here, the particular problem is actually analyzed type problem. We have to understand the local max, local mean concept. And based on that, we have to analyze the function. Okay, that's it. Now here, why the continuous concept is very important here, right? Suppose the function is not continuous. So then we cannot apply this concept. Why? Because we don't know how the function behaves, right? That point of intersection will may not be holds good. So that's why it, that continuous statement is also very important and crucial and that's it hope you understood the problem thank you